Welcome to the Family Goals Podcast with Davey Pollock and Pastor Jay. My name is Jolan House, and the purpose of this podcast is to encourage you to grow closer to God, to strengthen your marriage, and to inspire your family to reach its highest potential. So we have all these great guests like Jeff Foxworthy, Coach Mark Rick, Tony Dungy, but this one right here has got to be my favorite. I don't even think she needs an introduction, but in this episode, we bring on the first lady herself, my mom, Jennifer Howes, as we discuss the most important things in marriage. Check it out. All, all right. We, all right. Well, we ready to get started. Are we ready? We probably need Keep to talk going. about that. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah, that would be. All right. So <laughs> I'm telling you, when uh, you, when you talk, I told you, when you talked about like lust and when you talk, when, when y'all talk like y'all don't have all figured out like that, it's a powerful thing for people. Cause we don't, we know you don't too, but anyways, we definitely don't. Have I can give you plenty of things I screw up. So, yeah. and I do. So I, and I'll yeah. continue to. Yeah, so are we starting this thing? Yeah, so just go ahead and just continue. All right, so I am not on my A game today. (laughs) (laughs) You are not. I did not have the breakfast of champions. So uh, another episode of Family (laughs) Please leave this, by the way. Do not edit this. I can't even put a sentence together today. So... Very this one should be the easiest the for family. you to introduce. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but I'm trying to. Family well, goals we, got, with Davey Pollock. We Pastor already do Jay. the intro, so you don't need to do another right. intro. Y'all just. So, Mom was doing great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Super excited today to have the first lady of Greystone Church, Jennifer House, on the Family Goals podcast with Davey Pollock and Pastor Jay. Yep. I'm honored to be here. And I'm uh, excited. you are the second female to have on. I know. I'm kind of disappointed I wasn't the first. That you weren't the first? Yeah. I think the you first, should have been the first. I, yeah. if, if I had to say, I would have had I you know. first, but that's, that and wasn't my side. by the side. way, I do love y'all's podcast. I love listening to it. I crack up. You know, it's You hilarious. think we're funny. I think y'all are funny. And I don't know if it's because I know y'all <laughs> or it really is funny, but it is funny. And it's good. I've learned a lot, so... All three of the Join people him. that I know that listen like yeah. to <laughs> Your mom, yeah, your well, wife. And, and my buddies. Yeah, one of my buddies, yep. <laughs> hey, I was listening to the podcast this morning. Hilarious story about Foxworthy's bit on the mooning. <laughs> on the mooning, yes. Yeah, you. That was, yeah, I was listening to that. As What'd you think? It, it was bomber it was hilarious. <laughs> Is it not awesome? Bomber one to bomber two. Yeah. Permission to press or hang. Okay, I mean, you have a female in the room. Let's tame it down a little bit. I mean, you have a son and a daughter. You've seen a booty? Like, come on now. We've all seen a booty. <laughs> hey, I think you're a little too comfortable around the first lady. I, I mean, I, I, she's family. That's yeah. Good with yeah. it. There you go. There I'm looking forward to this. So you you came up with seven what? Like this is now. I, I want to know the backstory of how this happened. So well, we've had a requ- we've had requests. Right, right road. Yes. First day with his <laughs> Jeez, oh, Hey, first day, first day with his new mouth. It's okay. Yeah. We're working through it. Let's go. Yes. Request about marriage. To talk stuff. about marriage. <laughs> right. Yes. And so we we thought, well, what better person to talk about marriage than the than the first lady? Hundred percent. So we hit, we'll have a female perspective today. But the angle that I'm taking, I, I was asked to write an art article for Gwinnett. Gwinnett Citizen. Gwinnett Citizen. So I wrote seven reasons we're still married after 25 years. So I, I came up with um, and seven And it's reasons. his seven reasons. It's my seven reasons. It's not necessarily mine, but I agree with so them. So do you disagree Maybe. Do you disagree with these reasons? I don't disagree with them per se, but per they're se. just yours. If I were to write seven, they might be different. They might be the same or different. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, well, maybe we'll, we'll start with we'll start with we'll these. start with your seven. Then I want to know from the first lady how we would possibly tweak them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll do so. that. Yeah. So, so the first one is we try to be the first to say I'm sorry. So, you're talking about being real, being authentic. Jennifer and I get in arguments, we get in fights, we get upset with each other. Who wins this one usually? Well, we actually had a fight Wednesday night, and we were both tired. And he was sharing something with me, and I just gave my opinion. And then that made him mad that I my that I didn't champion his thought. I just immediately shot it down. And I know that. Year one, he told me, just don't shoot down every dream I have. But mm-hmm. I, we were both tired, and I shot it down. And then we had to work out things because we had a really busy weekend. We were busy. I was speaking at a women's conference Thursday, Friday. We had company coming in. Jesse had the eighth grade dance. A lot going on. A lot going on. And so then 
were going to bed and were both mad, honestly. And so we both, neither one of us ever, I don't think, got to the point where we understood the other one's point yep. of view per se, but we both just said, I'm sorry. I, I used to think that, like, if I talked enough, I could get him to see it the way I do. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't work. And it's probably the same. So sometimes you just have to say, I'm sorry, I don't understand it, but I'm sorry. Me and Lindsay had a, a similar thing not recently, and – Sometimes I just don't, sometimes I can say it. I can be the first to apologize, but I don't mean it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, there, and there's, mm-hmm. there's a difference, but. But, I, but at I, least I know, by saying you're sorry, that opens the door to. It does, to but, but I still, do, I still didn't mean it. And, and she knew the difference. She was like, yeah, she's like, you said you're sorry, but. And it took me a minute to really think about it more from her perspective. Think about like, this is. This is pretty dumb, you know, but in an in internal, but here's, you know, one thing that you, you brought up that made me think of something too. You said we were both tired. Mm-hmm. I think it's so important that we understand when this is going to enter. It's going to enter when we're tired. And when we were arguing in my mind was the devil's trying to divide us right now. And I think when you see the bigger picture, like me getting my way in this moment, it's not that a point. The, important the devil is trying to divide us and even though I don't agree you know we weren't eye to eye I can say I'm sorry and let it go and so we always try, try to apply this bible verse Ephesians 4 uh, 26 27 uh, don't let the sun go down while you're still angry and don't give the devil a foothold so we try not to go to sleep <laughs> don't let the sun go down while you're still angry like don't go to bed angry like let's let's just at least resolve it and talk about it before we Well, and let's be real. We, we were sleep. coming off Easter. We had had 41 baptisms. God's doing amazing things. And at prayer the night before, our Azora campus meets on Tuesday nights for prayer, several of the people prayed for our protection. And it kind of alerted me to the devil's going to try to, how's he going to win? By dividing us. And so we've got to keep working. We have to keep working on it. Yeah, it made me a little uncomfortable when four or five different people in the prayer time are praying for Jennifer and I's protection. I was like, well, what is something about to happen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate the prayers. Yeah, and they, we have a loving and group And they of came people. Wednesday night when we were arguing. We were laying in bed, and I was thinking the devil is trying to divide, and we're not going to let it. And I, I think that's a great word for everybody because we, we've had a lot of people baptized, a lot of people making big decisions. Whenever you're growing, whenever you're – make a huge decision for Christ, you make a decision to start tithing, you make a decision to get baptized, you make a decision to start having a quiet time, you're going to have attacks. I mean, that's when the, that's when Satan's mm-hmm. going to attack. So he likes to attack us at these. So coming off of Easter, I mean, super incredible. We, we were definitely under attack. Mm-hmm. So so do you, do you agree with this one? I agree, be 100%. The first, be yes. the first to say Yes. So the first one's okay. okay. So I'm, so first ba- lady puts her stamp of approval. Stamp. So I'm batting a thousand. That's the first one. Uh, we're, we're one for one already. <laughs> Patience, young grass. All right, the second one is we do not order our family around the kids and their activities. The kids are never the CEOs of our family. I know I, she agrees with this. I agree 100%, but you have to keep – you. there are seasons, and you're in the season right now, but when our kids were both playing, we were at the ball field. I was teaching school full-time. I was getting my master's. We were, like, thin um, as far as, like, our time and our energy. And so we really had to make it a point. Both of our parents are great, and they would keep our kids so we could get away or go on weekends or vacations or things like that. And we did have to order sometimes our daily schedule around their activities. Yeah, of course. Of course. But they were never. They got to get there. You have, and, to, you have to schedule together to get them there, 100%. Well, and there were times when the kids were younger where it was starting to creep in. These kids think they're in charge. <laughs> and then we had to lay down the law, and we would have like two or three days of tension. And then the family would get back in rhythm. You know, he and I wouldn't have tension, but us and the kids, because the kids were like, whoa, I've been getting my way, or I've been leading this thing. For a little bit. You know what that makes me think what? of, by the way? Every time, my, it makes my mom mad, but that's okay. Every time we left our kids and went by ourselves, 
the deprogramming, deprogramming that followed, like yeah, every yeah. single time. Yeah. And and I remember telling my mom, I'm like, listen, you're making my job harder. Like we're grandparents, we don't have to do X, Y, and Z anymore. No, you don't. You don't. No, but you don't have to do X, Y, and Z. But just if you reinforce our rules that are non-negotiable things, that like manners is not hard. Sleep time is not hard. Eating good foods is but not I hard. But I also like, think she's doing you a favor, and it's just part of it. Same with us. When our parents would keep our kids, it took a couple days to get back in the rhythm. So give your mom some grace. We, is no, your I, mom I, one no. of the three people that listen to our podcast? Yes, she is. <laughs> Probably. Um, hey, Miss Pollock. And, and, and we do, we do, we do, I did give her grace, but I'm just yeah, saying, I, I, I think some things should be, like my mama wouldn't put up with disrespect. My mama wouldn't put up with no manners back in the but day. But with your like, kids, she does. Oh my gosh. Well, She's one so, time. She used to hit me with everything in the world. I probably shouldn't say that, but she used to smash me with things if i slap nickels on the back playing don't you hit that baby i'm like well one time do you when, remember what you hit me with <laughs> when julia was a teenager i was and she was a really we didn't have to discipline her much but i remember she was giving me some grief and she looked at me and said i wish i could live with grammy and i said you don't know what it was like to live with grammy <laughs> <laughs> like grammy grammy's a different person there yes. home girl <laughs> yes grammy and used to be she, that real deal yeah yeah, and so, but it's a, when you're a grandparent, it is different, um, but. You get yeah. soft but as you get older. Yeah. I have seen a lot of families who do revolve their lives around their kids, and we've, we've seen this because our kids are older now, but we, we know a lot of people that actually have gotten divorced after their kids have Graduation, left the house. they get divorced. Because everything, yeah. everything was revolved around the kids, and the kids aren't there anymore, so it's like, hey. We, I think that's an epidemic. I see it. I see it all over the place. Well, the, and the people kids come stay first. together just for the kids instead of working. The best thing for your kids is for you to have a healthy marriage. Yeah. Um, but I, last night when I was speaking, one of the things they said, "What do you want your kids to see? You know, what is important to you for your kids?" I said, "Day to day, I want my kids to see a per, a, a person that loves God and loves the, loves their mama, mm -hmm. loves his wife, like puts her first and loves on her. Like we have to." I've, I've seen it and I've seen the divorce now too. The divorces are coming. You know, we're getting to the age now where the kids are getting older and we're starting to see the divorce rate for a lot of our friends start to come in because we didn't see any of it when they were younger. I don't know why, but now getting to middle school, high school, you're starting to see more more separations, unfortunately. Well, even, even Tony Dunn, she said that the number one thing on the top 10 things of all pro dad was loving your wife. Love that mama. Love, love mom first. Love your wife first. So two for two. Two for two? Two for two, yeah. Two for two. I think Pollock's going to like this yeah, one. Yeah, I think uh, so too. I don't know. Maybe Jennifer <laughs> doesn't agree with this one. No, I agree with it. Uh, number three, we always keep the romance hot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joan, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Joan's red. Joan is as red <laughs> as the Georgia Bulldogs jerseys, bro. No, I think. So how do we do this? I think you have to have margin. <laughs> if you're burned out and tired and you're not. If you're worn out and worn thin, then you're not going to be able to do it. And I also think, like, I grew up with a sister. I didn't understand guys <laughs> and how men are wired. Is Sorry, Joe on Joe just left. <laughs> he's Joe, leaving the room Oh, here. he's coming to the mic. <laughs> do I, can I leave the room? <laughs> yes, you can, you can leave. One. Do I need to? <laughs> you can leave yes, if you no, want to. Did you just say if you're, if you're tired and worn out, you're not going to do it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is this podcast it? rated <laughs> this is so good no, jolin's dying over here <laughs> but okay so at the pastor's wives co conference i was at this weekend sandra stanley was one of the speakers and i'd never heard her speak in person before and one of the things she said was that you're the only opportunity for romance that your husband has and so to really Mm. understand that think that i've and never heard that that's yeah, good it's I a like good that. way that's to true. say it but if you're thinking of it that way you've got to prioritize it you know? i've heard the microwave crock pot y'all heard yeah. that before he right? always jokes that he's a crock pot i really just want to cuddle <laughs> <laughs> that's not true <laughs> this, is, this, is killing Joel and this is great but okay but, so so what i take from that and what i've experienced through marriage so far is um I think that we have to, it's okay to have a want. It's okay to have a desire, but I think it's not okay when we take out 
our wants and our like when we when we get upset and we react to not being able to fulfill number three. Like I think it's okay to want, it's okay to uh, hope, but when you get when you change your behavior towards your wife because you don't, you're wrong. That's how I. Th- that's how I think. Like I-, I told my wife from the beginning, and again, me and Lindsay, we didn't we didn't have sex before we were married. Some of y'all know that, some of y'all don't. But like, I told her from the beginning, I don't want to just, I don't want to have sex just to have sex. Like if you don't want to, I don't. This doesn't need to happen. Like I don't, I don't want this to happen. And I don't know if we're talking too much about no, this, but no, I, 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 I was like, this is something that like we do together that we want to do that that's supposed to be special, not just to do it, which. I think I've also heard from my buddies that, that will say, I don't care. Like <laughs> it well, doesn't necessarily have to be special. So I think you have to, that's one of those things that you have to communicate. communicate. That's what I was going to talk about. Like it. we didn't have sex before marriage either. And so when you, you're trying to honor God yep. is dating and engaged. And then all of a sudden you're married and you can, it's a weird transition kind yeah. of, and it's awkward to talk about, but communication is, yeah. is good. A hundred percent. Well, so. there, there's a great book out there called His Needs, Her Needs, and the wife's needs are completely different than the husband's needs. And so when I'm talking about keeping the romance hot, like romance to her might, to be, different her might than, be different than, ro- than romance, romance for me. Yep. Yeah. Right. All right but, if, but you have to discuss this with your spouse. Like, as uncomfortable as you might feel about this, like, you need to, you need to have these conversations because you need to know the why. Like, it's just like anything else. When you know it and you understand her and you understand what makes her tick and it, it's... It's it, definitely being selfless. Think about the other person. Talk about it. Seek to understand them. And then your goal is longevity. Yeah. So... And because this when, is, oh, because when, you, when you take it off yourself and like, all right, how am I going to love and serve Lori and make sure that she is getting what she needs, well, then... In turn, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be loved, you know? So it's just like, all right, how can I, how can I go out and love her the way that she needs, you know, to yeah. be loved? So then that way she's being filled up, you know? So, I mean, it, it's exactly but what it I just, it, I get that. And I hear people say that all the time. Like if you take care of her and you're meeting her needs, the, but there's still circumstances where you're like, that. you talked about, you're exhausted. Oh yeah. Like we were at the Absolutely. ball field all weekend. Like we're doing all it, it's still okay. And I, and I might be filling her tank. I might right. be holding her hand. I might be telling her how much she loves me. Oh, yeah. She still might be exhausted. Oh, yeah. And it's okay. Yep. It's right. not the end of the world. Right. And I don't know about y'all, but y'all are obviously at a different stage in marriage, but this also gets way easier as you get older. And I don't know if yeah. it, like it has for me. Like, it's like, <laughs> I mean, when you're younger, it's totally different. Like your thoughts, your process. But once you start getting older, you start to realize like, yeah, okay, it's, I, I can back off. But when you're young, I think it's, a, it's probably a harder struggle for a lot of people too. So are you, are you agreeing with number three or, or am I two for three here? I'm agreeing. Three for three. Three for three. You might be seven for seven. I don't know, but three think, for three, yes. I think she's going to support her husband regardless and tell you she No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's listening in. All right, number four is we focus our marriage on Jesus Christ. That's Amen. 100%. Yeah. Can't, can't disagree with no. Jesus. So. And we have our own walk with God. He mm-hmm. has a walk with God. I have a walk with God. I can't ride his coattails. Mm-hmm. And I've done that before, and I think first year of marriage was a challenge as far as, um, you know, because you have someone in your space all the time. And Uh how do you, but yeah, we can't, I can't ride his coattails or vice versa. Well, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4.12. I don't see how any marriages stay together. If Amen. Jesus is not the center hey. of the marriage, because we're so Amen. selfish, we're such selfish individuals, and if you're always thinking about yourself, it's, it's not going to last. Jesus has to be the center. No, he's the re- he's the reason we we do what we do. Yeah, I do want to speak to there are men whose wives aren't Christians or aren't walking with God, or vice versa. Women whose men whose husbands aren't coming to church. That's one of the things in my ladies group that the women whose husbands won't come to church with them or don't want to be in small group or grow. It's such a burden for them. It's hard. And what I encourage them to do, a lot of times they'll say, well, I want to wait till my husband will come with me before I get baptized or I join this or do this. And I always say, don't wait. The Bible tells us 
to you walk with God and you love God and out of that your husband will be one one over but it is a struggle and I want to have empathy for those yeah. people in that situation who but you still can put Jesus first in your life and then and then by the way see what it does right because it will probably change him right I mean at some point he's going to go wow like case for Christ the book that was written like at some point right the evidence is going to be so overwhelming of your change that they're going to be like something's different like something's something's right. unique I, I want that like it's it's going to happen so there's a book prayer um prayers of a praying wife and it's like daily devotions where you pray over your husband and power of a praying wife yeah that's what it is power of a praying wife and that's really good but it is hard so i do have there's probably a third of my lady small group on wednesday nights their husbands don't come or aren't walking with god that's their number one prayer request every week so and we're praying we're praying for them as yep. well so so you agree with that one agree with that one all right number five is we do life together uh, Jennifer and I are not living two separate lives. She is my best friend. And so uh, I do make the statement in the article that, of course, I, I go play tennis. I used to play church basketball, <laughs> golf with the friends. I, I go do my own thing. She goes to the spa. She, I mean, we, have, we do our own things. But most of the time, we're best friends. We're doing life together. I think but, that I agree with that. I also think that God's called you to specific things, and he's called me to specific things sometimes. And so there are times where, like, for instance, the last couple years I've been um, helping get Celebrate Recovery started at our church. And so I was passionate about that, invested in that, meeting with people about that. You were supportive, but you weren't, like, involved. Right. So there are things, there are other things that I get super I think you can have your own thing, too. But for the most part, I, at the end of the day, we do life together. I think what she did was just disagree with you in a very polite manner. No, yeah. I mean, we do like... I understand what you're saying. I, listen, is this article already published? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, okay, it's so old. It's already published. That's good. Like This is old news. Yeah, this this one isn't your best. <laughs> I mean, so so, so y'all are both disagreeing. I with just think... You know, if you're focusing our marriage on Christ, then we're doing life together. Like I, I don't, I don't know this one. I think where well, that, my, I think where that comes from. You trying my to get point, to seven? My point, my point is. Were you trying to get to seven because of God's number? Is that what you're trying to do? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. The the point is, you can't be living two separate lives. I got you. You can't just be passing. But in you the do night. need two separate lives. I do agree. You with do that need too. your own stuff. You need yeah. you need your time. You need your time. We can't. I, I I can tell you this from experience. Like when I get home from from football season and I'm home all the time, like I get on my wife's nerves. Like <laughs> I, I, I know I do. Like I can feel it. Like I'm a lot. Okay. I understand that. Like, but it's just important for me to have my workout group. It's important for me to have other things that I pour into that I do. It's, it's so important for me. She doesn't do it enough to go do stuff with her friends. It's important for her to go do shop, go do whatever, like get your, Get your own stuff done that you need to get done. Have your own time. You know, I, I just think it's so. I, you know, I mean, it's and okay. it, I also think it's important to have really close friends of the same. Like I have really close female friends. He has really close guy friends because they can fill up. He doesn't have enough time for. I, I'm a processor out loud. He doesn't want to listen to all the things I've thought about all day long. And, you know, so I need other people that will listen to me. And so I have that need met. But I, under, I agree with the overall thing, that we are on the same page. We, we're living life for the same purpose. Our, our goal is the same in life. We want to glorify Jesus with everything we do. Yeah, that was number four. Yeah. So we didn't need five. Yeah, right. but, but we do go on dates. We have date night. Yeah. We have lunches. We walk together. There are things that we do yeah, together. Yeah, when you're living for Christ, me. you're putting your bride first, so that's something that you do. You just don't, like I said, you don't need five on your list. Yeah, Jennifer wants me to go exercise with her and walk around the neighborhood. And I was like, well, I'll go walk with you, but that's not really exercise for yeah, me. Yeah, he does walk with me a lot, which is nice, you know? It's good. Well, if it's something you want him like to do. It, I want him to, yeah. And, 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 and by the way, that's something that I think wives, husbands need to do is, like, if you make it, if, if it's important to you, I'll do it. But you have to let me know it's important to you because I, I don't want to walk. I, I have no, I would rather run. 
I would right. rather go do something active than go walk. Get but the heart rate if up. it's something that we're going to talk and you, it's something that fills your tank, dude, I'm in. Like, well, sometimes I, I think we're sitting here on the couch talking. Let's go walk and talk and talk it out. No, and walk it out now. Walk. Yeah. But um, all right, so I'm four for five. That's fine. That's good. That's fine. That's fine. You're still batting. <laughs> hey, you're batting good. I mean, yeah. it's still uh, solid. Yeah. yeah. And it's not that I disagree, but like I do. No. Okay. Call it disagree, which is fine. I'm sure no, not everyone always agrees with every, all my sermons either. So, Thank you for listening to this week's Family Goals podcast with Davey Pollock and Pastor Jay. So after having Jennifer on the podcast, I think we've all decided to rebrand and change the name to Mom Goals with the First Lady. So far, I'm pretty much on board with all of Jonathan's marriage rules. I'm not too sure about number three, keeping the romance hot. I may or may not had to leave the room when they were talking about that one. But I believe that the greatest of these is keeping Jesus at the center of the marriage. If you do that, everything else will fall into place. So this is just part one of our time with Jennifer. So check back next week to hear the rest.